Oran, all in Missouri. Embarrassed Minnesota. Embarrassed. Yeah. So if you're from there, are you an embarrassment? These, these are living, some of them living up to their name. Idiotville, Oregon. <laughs> That's what we're going to name, rename Washington, D.C. Welcome to Stiff Ohio. <laughs> Monkey's eyebrow from Kentucky. I've heard of that one. And Toad Suck, Arkansas. And I've heard of that one. Yep. Yep. It's like Helltown, Ohio, too. Yeah. There's some great that names out there. <laughs> All right, well, let's stand and have a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here, and thank you for each person that is here today, and I pray that we would all uh, just glorify your name and receive from you today, in Jesus' name, amen. Welcome somebody this morning, if you haven't already.
praise God. Amen. Give the Lord another hand.
this morning in Sunday school, through our faith in Jesus, we are able to be called sons and daughters of God. Yes, we are all of God's creation, but we are only His sons and daughters when we accept His Son. That's a privilege and a gift to us that we are co-heirs with Christ. Thank you for that today. Father, thank you that we have access to your throne, that we have access to healing, to mercy, to grace, to your love everlasting. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, if you have a need and you need, you'd like us to pray with you or you want to stand in for somebody else, I just want to invite you to come on down this morning and let's pray. If you have a need, let's bring it before the Lord.
you all the honor and the glory. Lord, we trust you that you know what you are doing, God. We don't even know what we're doing half the time, God, but you know your plan and your purpose for all of us. Help us as we trust you more. Continue to be with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. God is good and all the time. Give you a moment to get your tithe and offering ready. I thought you were trying to hand me something. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh thank you. Now, don't get the floor dirty. Kevin just uh, vacuumed it yesterday. Yeah, clean it up. I almost said uh, mode. <laughs> Kent, would you help us with the offering this morning? Let's pray over this offering. Father, thank you for it, Lord God. And I pray that you just bless it, Lord God, as we use it to uh, be a light, God, in our community. Uh, bless back, Lord, those that were able to give this morning and just continue to uh, affirm your promises to us. In Jesus' name, <laughs> amen. <laughs> warming up in here a little bit. And <laughs> of course, I'm wearing flannel, so. <laughs> oh, praise God. Well, today we are going to be finishing up our journey that we've been taking through Joshua. And <clears throat> uh, the next several chapters from where we stopped last are all about the allotments um, uh, there was more conquest, uh, southern Cana, northern Cana. Uh, then they, they go through and talk again. Not that these things aren't important, but just for our purposes, we're not going to go through all these. But uh, remain, re, uh, being reminded of the different kings that were defeated by Moses and by Joshua, land that was still to be conquered, uh, and then all the allotments. Uh, <clears throat> and have a chance, go ahead and, and yourself and finish reading through them, but I want to, I want to point something out that I think is really just, I'm, I'm a little jealous right here when I read this. So if you were, you remember that Caleb and Joshua were the two out of the 12 spies with Moses that, that said, don't, um, uh, that said, yes, let's go. Even though it looks bad, we can take this land. God's given it to us. And then, uh, the other 10 spies says, no, we can't do it. We'll die. You know, uh, and so Caleb and Joshua were the only two of the 12 spies that were able to go into the promised land. And uh, everybody else that was, I believe, 20 and under got to go, but everybody else that was older did not because they didn't uh, trust God. But just to show you this, uh, Joshua chapter 14 uh, talks a little bit about Caleb's request and inheritance. And uh, uh, I love his deal here. It starts about verse 6. He said, to Joshua, uh, you know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Barnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old when the servant of the Lord sent me uh, to spy out the land, and I brought him word as it was in my heart. And of course, he goes through and tells that story. And verse 10 says, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said, these 45 years. So he's 85 at this point. Because he was 40 at that time, and it's been 45 years since then. And he says, and now I am behold, I am this day 85 years old. I am still as strong as I was in the day that Moses sent me. Now, my strength now is as my strength was then, strength was then for war and for going and coming. I'm like, Lord, I would like my strength that I had 10 years ago <laughs> when I was 38 
not 48. <laughs> Amen. I wish I had the, 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 uh, uh, even five years ago, I wish I was, you know, <laughs> and here this guy is 85 years old and he ain't afraid to go to war. He says, I'm just as strong then, uh, today as I was then. And I just think that's really cool. <clears throat> but if you think about it, you, you think about the, uh, he's giving credit to God for uh, that promise. Because that promise was, you'll be able to go into the promised land. You'll be able to go and get your inheritance. And that's what he was doing. And, he, and so he was getting his allotment, this, this certain hill country. So you go through all those chapters. And then chapter 23 talks about it, Joshua goes back over again and says, hey, here's what's going on. I'm really old. I don't have much longer to live. Um, and remember everything God has told you and, and taught you is what he was telling the leaders and uh, be true to them. And so we're going to pick up in chapter 24 today. And I'm going to go ahead and read starting in verse 1, but let me pray. Father, thank you again for this word. I bless it to us today, and may we all receive from it in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua 24, beginning of verse 1. Uh, it says, Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, and judges, the judges and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau, and I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. And I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did uh, in the midst of it, and afterward I brought you out. Then I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your fathers with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. And when they cried to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come upon them and cover them. And you, your eyes saw what I did in Egypt. And you lived in the wilderness a long time. Then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel, and he sent and invited Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Indeed, he blessed you, so I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over... The the Jordan and came to Jericho and the leaders of Jericho fought against you and also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, Hittites, Girgashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. And I gave them into your hand and, and I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you and the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not labored and cities that you had not built and you dwell in them. You eat of the fruit of the vineyards and olive orchards that you did not plant. Now, one of our former presidents made a statement one time that really ticked off a lot of people when he said, you didn't build that. <laughs> you might remember that. Well, in this instance, God's telling them, you didn't build that. I gave it all to you. All right. He's telling them, I gave it all to you. And Joshua's relaying the message of the Lord and saying, I brought you out. Yes, you fought, but I fought ahead of you. And that's what a blessing that we have from the Lord, that he is going before us when we, when we serve the Lord. And as we see here, and uh, you look at Psalms 23, what did uh, David say towards the end? And he said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of, the, all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So you've got, uh, God told Moses that uh, his goodness would go before him. And so it was like, uh, uh, it was almost like goodness and goodness and mercy and goodness, you know, surrounding him. And he said that I'm going before you and, and this is what's going to happen. And I'm going to bless you and give these things to you. That, that promised land was a glimpse of heaven and the new heavens and the new earth the new Eden that we are going to get to dwell in uh, one of these days. That 
It is something that Jesus himself is building. A, a, the, our, our maker, who's a city whose builder and maker is Jesus. Okay? And we're going to get to enjoy that. But Joshua goes on to say, in verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. He's referring to what we would call the uh, in the land of Ur of the Chaldeans. Uh, when he says beyond the river, he's talking about where Abraham came from. Uh, after, after the flood, uh, God told uh, Noah and his family to go out and multiply again and spread out. And they, they moved out a little bit, but as the, the more generations came along, they said, hey, let's gather together and build a tower to, to heaven. And so uh, God had to go down there, disperse them, change the languages and disperse them. And at that point is when he called Abraham or Abram at the time. And he lived beyond the Euphrates with his father, uh, and said, uh, come out and, and go this way. And that's when he's, what he's referring to. And they, they served false gods over there. And then he said, and the ones that they served in Egypt that you lived in for so long, 400 years, brought them out of Egypt. And he says, and now serve the Lord. And he gives this next statement and says, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, okay, that, that sounds dumb, doesn't it? I mean, it's, it, it sounds kind of silly, but Joshua, I think, is, is saying to them, you know, if it's so bad serving God, if, it, if it's evil, if you think this isn't right, then, then choose you to say, go back to where you came from. He's trying to remind them, and that's what we have to remember as, as children of God, where we came from. We got to remember where we came from, where we were at. He reminded them over and over again in the, in the, in the, uh, uh, the wilderness when they said, oh, we should have stayed in, in Egypt where we had leeks and onions and melons and all this good food, but you were slaves. You were slaves, just like the, the, the one that's been set free from a, a certain, whatever kind of addictions or been uh, set free from uh, sin and all these things. He said, remember, but if, if what you are have experienced, what, if what God has done for you seems evil in your eyes, it, it's such a strange statement. You know, uh, it, it, it's kind of like... Uh, you want to say to the person that's maybe they were a drug addict and and maybe they're getting tempted to go back or they think, you know, I've been serving God and and uh, man, I, I, I may go back to that way of life. Now, it doesn't always just pop out like that. It, you know, circumstances happen. And, you know, we would want to get a hold of that person and say, do you remember your life back then? Do you remember how bad it was? Do you remember the sickness? Do you remember uh, the desperation, the health problems? Do you remember what it did to your family? And you want to remind them of those things. And then, and then look at them and go, is your life so bad right now? Hasn't God blessed you? Hasn't God saved you? And, and I think that's what that Joshua, when he makes this statement of, if it seems evil in your eyes, you know, uh, that's why people who who refuse to serve the Lord and go to church and get involved and, and, and do the things that God's asked us to do, that they think that where they're at is, 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 is fine and dandy, and it's because it's familiar to them. And they haven't tasted and seen that the Lord is good. Because everybody, pretty much everybody, that comes out of whatever lifestyles they were in and, and comes into a life uh, of faithfulness and servants, service to Christ, will say, I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to go back to that. It, it, my life is better. Yes, there were some fun times. Yes, there was some fun things. But those fun times always had a price. They always come with a price, especially the sin fun times. Because the wages of sin is death. And so there's always repercussions and, and consequences of those, those things that have not just physical and temporal consequences, but eternal consequences. And so he said, it, look, if, you, if it was so good back then, 
and you think this is so bad now, then go ahead. It's, it's kind of like when, <laughs> when kids, you know, they tell their parents, you know, I hate my life, I hate you, and blah, blah, blah. You know, well, if it's so good, go find you some parent, better parents, you know. Anybody, am I the only one that's ever said that? <laughs> if I'm so bad, go find you a new dad, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, my kids know I've said that before. Uh, you know, and that's what Josh was like. It, this is good. You've got it good. But whatever your decision, he says, if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose him to stay, whom you will serve, whether the gods your father has served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. As for me and my house, we will continue to serve the Lord. He says, you need to make up your mind. He says, you need to make up your mind. And he's, he's given them these, these warnings. He's given them these encouragements uh, because he knows his, his time. In fact, you go down to verse 29 and then he ends up dying. I mean, he, he's, you know, he's close to, I'm not exactly sure how old he was when he died, uh, but I think he was at least 90, uh, 110. He was 110 when he died. So he knows it's coming. You know, he knows this and he's trying to, encourage them. He's trying to challenge them and remind them of the good things, remind them of what God has brought them out of and in, and brought them out of and brought them into. And he says, you need to decide. You need, don't be wishy-washy. Don't be apprehensive. James says uh, that when you ask God, when you pray to ask in faith, not with doubt for he who doubts is like the wave of the sea tossed about by every new thing that comes along, that we can be so unstable. They're, in fact, he says they're unstable in all their ways. And Joshua was saying, don't be unstable. Don't be unstable in all your ways. Choose this day. Me and my house, this is what we're doing. What are you going to do this day? And as you go down and you read further in verse 16, the, the people all say, far be it for us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we will serve the Lord for he is our God. It's like, yeah, praise God. They're renewing their commitment. They're renewing the covenant. That they're going to serve God. He, that uh, renewing those Ten Commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And they're, they're saying, we're going to do that. And then Joshua throws out another phrase. Another word. 19. But Joshua said to the people, You are not able to serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins seems like he's deflating them <laughs> they're getting all puffed up and then he takes out a pen and pops their bubble but he's trying to bring them to reality here because how many times have we made promises we made you know in, in everything in life i mean it can be sports and you know it can be to our parents i'm not yeah i'm not gonna mess up anymore i yes i'm gonna do it perfect you know i i always love the story of when uh, Tim Tebow was playing, I think it was his junior year of college, and they lost to Ole Miss, I think. They lost to Ole Miss, and I don't know, it was game, like game number four of the football season. And he got up in front of everybody, and he took the blame. He said, it is my fault. He goes, but I guarantee you, we are going to finish strong. And they ended up winning the national championship that year. And... You know, a lot of a lot of sports people and different ones make promises. Politicians make promises all the time. Yeah, when I get in office, by golly, work, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And then they always mess up or somebody else messes them up. And and I think Joshua here is trying to not he's not saying that God's not gonna be with them, that he won't he won't love them, but he's saying, in your own capability, you can't do this. You can't do this on your own. You, you, can't, you can't do that by yourself. He says, verse 20, if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, 
then he will turn and do harm and consume you after having done you good. He's like, you, you can't do it on your own, okay? No, uh, you can do it, all right, with help. But don't think that you're going to be perfect by yourself. And they, the people turned and said, no, but we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, <clears throat> excuse me, he, he said, okay, we're going to make it official then. <clears throat> excuse me. He said, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and put in place statutes and rules for them at Shechem. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. And he took a large stone and set it up there under the terebinth that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. And Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord that has spoken to us. Therefore, it shall be a witness against you, lest you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. <clears throat> Joshua knew how those people were. He knew how they had been in the past. He was there with them when they came out of Egypt. He was there for the 40 years they wandered in the desert. He was there for the next five years as they do all of these battles and, <clears throat> and, and take the promised land. And he's saying, look, this is a difficult thing. You know, Jesus said that someone that's going to build a house doesn't just go out and say, I'm going to build a house and goes out and grabs some wood. No, he's got to make sure he's got money. He, he figures the cost. And he says it's the same way of, of following him, that there is a cost. Now, people, there's a lot of false uh, preachers out there that are saying, oh, you don't have to give anything up to follow. You just accept his grace. Yeah, his, we've got his grace. That's how we're saved through faith through our faith, we're saved by grace through our faith, but Jesus said, pick up your cross, follow me, deny yourself and follow me. And Joshua was saying, look, you can't do this on your own. And, and I think he was kind of maybe giving them a, a warning, tread lightly on what you say. We make promises all the time that we break, don't we? Politicians and, and sports people and husbands and wives and, and kids and, and whoever. Yeah, I'm going to be there and I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can uh, to, to do my best and, and we're going to bring home the victory or we're going to do this or that and, <clears throat> and we're going to make you proud. And man, they got little side dealings going on. They got this and that going on. They get, they get involved. They have great motives. They have great intentions in the beginning and then they get lazy. They get lackadaisical and they fall away. And he says... He's, he's saying to him, I want you to take this seriously. Take this seriously. He says, for me and my house, <clears throat> we are serving the Lord. But because of what you've said, I'm, I'm, I'm making this all official. Well, in the, in, in the next book of the Bible is, is the book of Judges. And, and some time went by, and we see in Judges chapter 2, they start doing evil in the sight of the Lord again. Right down the same path. Just like Joshua, I, I believe, was trying to warn them to stay strong. You see, you and I <clears throat> need to be like Joshua and we need to draw a line in the sand and say, this is it. We'll, we'll, we'll go no further problem is we want to push the boundary and push the line and push the line and push the line. One of my favorite uh, Star Trek quotes um, is uh, from Star Trek Generations. No, Star Trek, uh, the second one they made with, with them. Anyways, it they're, they're talking about that the enemy is taking more ground and taking more ground and we, we've given up this area and we've given up this area. 
and, and the captain, Jean-Luc Picard, says, it stops here and now. No more. No more. We, 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 we've done it, and we've, we've, we're losing the fight. We're losing the fight, but we're done with that. We are stopping it here. And they end up winning. They end up winning the battle. Um, we do that in compromise. He says, put away all these things. And we compromise and let this little thing in and then that little thing and that little thing. And <clears throat> maybe not so much that it, I'm not saying it would necessarily endanger our salvation, but it's like every one of these things that, that we used to do or things of the world that God has, has told us to put away and to stay away from and we allow to creep back into our life. It's, I just get this, you know, we got the old song, um, uh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And we put a little something here and we let a little bit of this back in our life. And we let a little bit of this back and this back and this back. And so finally, if we're not careful, it's not just, it doesn't just dim our light. It can snuff out our light. We need to draw a line in the sand. And the only way that we will be faithful and can do this is through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 says, there, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise God. Amen. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for those who are in Christ. Christ Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, if you remain in me, if you stay in me, I will remain in you. So while we are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation for us. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, these things that Joshua was telling the people, because they didn't have access to Jesus at that time. They had the the yearly major sacrifice, uh, but they had the, the law, they had the other sacrifices that they could do, but the atonement was only once a year, and even then it still wasn't perfect. Like Jesus, it says, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh, because God's law is perfect. Our flesh isn't, and when our flesh gets involved in the law, it weakens it. Could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law, what they were going through there in Joshua, might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. How do we, <clears throat> how do we not end up like the, the Israelites did time and time again? We walk in the Spirit. We remain in Jesus Christ. We remain in Him and let His words abide in us, live in us. <clears throat> David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. He said, I got it and I'm not letting go. Somebody wants to come in and try to find it, you ain't going to get it. Yeah, the, the, the fruit's going to grow out of it, but you're not getting and take, stealing this away from me. Our line in the sand has power only if we're serving Jesus Christ. Only if it is drawn with the blood of Jesus. You know, I always think when I hear the line in the sand, you know, it's always kind of um, cartoons or kids shows, whatever, you know. Draw a line. You're either on that side or you're on this side, you know, and kids go to one side or they go to the other. And, and uh, uh, you know, or, oh, I'm over here, I'm over there, you know. Well, you're either with him or you're with me, you know. And uh, I'm thinking of Hook and Peter Pan. <laughs> and we're over here. No, we're over there. And people change their mind back and forth, back and forth. Listen. A wishy-washy 
Christian is weak and is powerless, but you remain, you stay on the Lord's side because there is only two sides. There is only his side or the world's side. And the ruler of the world, of the worldly, sinful, fleshly side is Satan himself, the ruler of this world. There's only two choices. There's only two. It's no wonder that our population is confused about genders and how many there are when there are so many religions out. There's so many religions. And I see it all the time. People say, well, how can you say that that Christianity and following Christ is the only way. There's many other ways out there. No, the, there's other ways, but they're not to the same place. They're not to the same place. And yes, there's good people in them. There are good Muslims. There are good Buddhists. There are good Hindus. There, there are good people in all these other false religions. But they have been deceived. For Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way to the Father. Right. The only way to eternal life. And that's something we need to be sharing in love. In love. Loving, loving them. But not compromising who we are. Remember, <clears throat> Jesus ate with sinners. But he didn't sin with sinners. Amen? Amen. They accuse him. Oh, he's over there eating with sinners. Well, that's not illegal. But if he was over there sinning with sinners, that was a problem. That was a problem. You want to have not be under the fear of condemnation? Remain in Christ. Because 1 John, I believe it's or 2 John. Pure love drives out all fear. And that fear it's talking about is the fear of condemnation. When you are solid in your faith, you have no fear. I've seen Christians, people who are supposed to be Christians, say, even I've even seen pastors, well, I hope I go to heaven. We have this confident, we have this confident hope in Christ. Yes, we do. Uh, and, and, and by saying that doesn't mean I, I'm declaring that I'm perfect and I don't mess up. No, I'm declaring that Jesus Christ is first in my life. And, and he remains in my life, and sometimes I, I still make mistakes, and I, I'm still going to mess up. But I'm not concerned with what my future holds, as long as I keep my faith, and I abide in him, and he abides in me. Be, be like Joshua in his house. Amen? Amen? Choose this day whom you will serve, not just serve on Sundays. Not just on the weekend or when it's convenient, amen, but serve all the time. Because if God is good all the time, all the time and all the time, God is good. then we should serve all the time and all the time we should serve. Amen? Praise God. Stand with me this morning. Okay. Father, we just come to you again in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for uh, this word, Lord God. We thank you, God, for the, the confidence that we can have in Jesus Christ, Lord God, to know that, that <clears throat> our, our place in heaven is, is secure because we're sealed with the Holy Spirit whenever we begin to abide and, and, and confess our faith in Christ and abide in him, we're sealed. Lord, I pray that you would help each one of us be firm in our faith in choosing this day and every day whom we will serve. God, and if there's any watching that don't know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, God, right now all they have to do is confess with their mouth that Jesus is their Lord and believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead and they shall be saved. 
we make Jesus our Lord and we live each day for him. When we turn away, we repent from the, our old life. Lord God, help us to remain. Lord, I lift up Scott Hobart, Lord God, who's having some heart issues. Father God, and I just pray that you just touch his body. God, I don't know all the circumstances, but Lord, I know that you are good and that you love him. And we just lift him up before you, Father God, and ask that you touch and heal his body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory, God, and we just give you the rest of this day today in Jesus' name. Amen.